I've wanted to create this video for a long time and there has been a lot of requests for a mid-journey and Photoshop guide that focuses on creating illustrations for children's books. Before I jump into that I really want to mention that I appreciate all of the support that I have received this far. I have gone from 0 to 8,000 subscribers in 3 months and this is more than just numbers for me. I appreciate each and every one of you all around the world. It may only be a click for you to subscribe but it means a lot to me and it encourages me to create more content like this. Now, before I jump into Photoshop and the creation part, I want to explain what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to create an entire illustration for a page in a children's book from start to finish by using Midjourney and Photoshop. We'll generate our images in Midjourney and I'll share the prompts that I use. I will not spend that much time on this part because I have two videos where I go in depth into creating consistent characters using Midjourney. If you're new to this, I highly recommend that you watch those videos as well. You'll find the link in the description down below. We're going to switch to Photoshop after that, and I will explain every part starting from importing our images from mid-journey to Photoshop, going through all the different tools, and focusing on the six most important ones that I use to create children's books, and ending with creating the entire scene together with you, so you can start to create your own books as soon as possible. Enough talking, and let's jump right into mid-journey. I want a red balloon as our main character and the illustrations will be about the brave balloon, flying higher and exploring different planets for every page. Here is a tip if you're creating your own books. When you're creating the outline of the story, try to ask yourself if this is something you can build more around when the book starts selling. In this case, I could create another book where our red balloon explores the different continents instead of the different planets. Other examples could be different seasons, different countries, animals, etc. You can also include a sidekick. Remember that parents, adults, are the buyers even though it's a children's book. With that being said, here are the different prompts that I used. I have included all the images I am using in this guide for free in a link in the description down below. You can download it if you want to do exactly what I am doing in this video and follow my steps in Photoshop. This is a cool way to practice and learn. Some people learn by watching, some by doing. I believe a combination is the best way to make it stick. Here is a prompt that I have been using a lot lately. I start the prompt with a long sheet and then I write the rest of my prompt. And in the end I add the aspect ratio so that I get an image with a long height and that helps us get a good image of a long sheet that we mentioned in the beginning of our prompt. This is a secret trick that I use to help Midjourney give me better results. This will surely work with other AI image generators as well. So without further ado, let's jump right into what we've all been waiting for. Open up Photoshop and a window should pop up where you can create a new document. This is simply where we set the dimensions for our page or illustration. I'll go with a width of 1920 pixels and a height of 1080 pixels which should give us a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You can set the dimensions to whatever you want and if you're going to create a children's book, I recommend following the standard book trim sizes by Amazon. Change the resolution to 300 if it's not already set to 300 and click on the blue button down here that says create. Now let the fun stuff begin. Now the first thing we need to do is to bring our image in here. To import an image to Photoshop, you need to simply drag and drop it inside. There we go. We get this box around our image once we import it into Photoshop. If you grab the corners, you can resize the image however you want. Hit enter once done, and the box is gone. Now I can still move the image around, but I can't resize it anymore. To bring the box back, you can use the short command Ctrl or Command plus T on your keyboard. Now we get the box back and can resize it however we want. And enter again once we're done, simple. Now for the next step, we're going to cut out a balloon from this concept design. And this is a great opportunity to introduce the toolbar. So, to the left we have this menu here with a bunch of really awesome tools. There is some tools here that you'll use more than others. I'll go over them from top to bottom and prioritize the ones that I believe will be the most essential for our cause. And on the right side, we have the color selector right here and all of these different things you can use. Gradients is something that I use a lot to create shadows or make a body part seem as it is underwater. 
below this section here, we have the adjustments where you can do a lot of cool manipulations for your pictures like levels, contrast and brightness. And down here you have the different layers which I'm going to go a little more in depth into later on in this video. This is basically where you toggle on and off the visibility and change the opacity of different layers. So now first let me go over the most important and most used tools right here. So this first one is the move tool which is what we use to move anything around any of the layers that is on your picture. Now the next one is the selection tool which is also something that you'll use frequently. Like the name suggests we use this tool to select a part of our image and then manipulate it however we want. Let's copy this by clicking on Ctrl or Command C and then Ctrl or Command V. If we look here at the layers section, we see that we have created a new separate layer. And you can see with this eye icon you can toggle on and off any of the different layers because you might just want to edit a certain layer. This is really useful as well. Now the next tool right here is the lasso tool. This is something that you can also use to create a selection. You simply hold down the left mouse button and make a selection. You can always get out of the selection by clicking once anywhere and the selection is going to go away. Speaking of selections, the next tool is the quick selection. Which is something that I use all the time to mask out animals, people, mountains, trees or any other object that I am working with. Let's try it here. It's really good at selecting an area and finding the edges. It's not as good at smaller details. And this is where you can just switch back to the lasso tool instead for the final touches. The next tool on the list is the crop tool. You probably know what it is. We use this tool to simply crop an image like this. No need to go into it more than that. The next tool is the color picker, also called the eyedropper tool. We can use this to pick and match a color from our current images. If I click over here in the bright part, I will get a brighter color. Over here, I will get a red color. Remember that you also can change the colors manually from the color picker if you want. And then we have the next tool that I use a lot. It is the spot healing brush. Now this is something that we can use if we want to cover up any imperfections or anything like that. Here we remove some white dots from our image of the planet Earth. Moving on to the next one, we have the brush tool. The brush tool might seem pretty simple but it can do a lot for you. We can with the help of the color picker that I showed you earlier. Choose a color and then paint over our image however we want. This is essential when working with details and trying to make small adjustments. I can probably do an entire video about its different use cases and it will still not cover half of it. Instead, I turned the balloon into a creepy face just for the love of the brush tool. If you're certain that you will not have a nightmare about this, click the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like and share while at it. The next tool is a personal favorite and it might surprise you if I say that it's the eraser tool. An eraser is a classical tool and it gives you the ability to adjust or remove certain parts of an image. Except in Photoshop, everything has a setting. This means that the eraser can be turned into different things. You're going to use this a lot. So if you right click with the eraser or brush tool, and this works for some other tools also, you'll get access to some settings for that particular tool. So here we can adjust the size and the hardness. The hardness is something that gives the feather effect on the edges of your selection. So we see that setting it to 100%, we get hard edges around where we erase and more feather on the opposite. Here I adjusted to something in the middle to remove the the white edges and pixels around our balloon. This is the last touches and details that turn your images from decent to very beautiful. Combining a good quality in your books together with good sales strategies like maybe having a discount code for your next book on the last page of your books to increase the chance of returning customer. It's simple logic. If they already showed interest in your product, chances are higher they will do it again if the quality is good. I want to show you another simple tool before I continue to the gradient tool. It's the type tool which can be found down here. Now if you're using the latest versions of Photoshop, you'll have this window appearing if you hover your mouse over a tool. 
This can be really useful if you haven't used a tool before or want to see Photoshop's example. Worth mentioning here is that Photoshop is all about creativity. Even if you learn all the tools and settings, which I don't recommend anyone to do, you'll still need to be creative to create something. What I love most about heavy editing programs like Photoshop is that you can achieve a certain result or solve a problem in many different ways. This means that there is no right way to edit images. As long as you get to your result and people finding and understanding your image, you're fine. Now getting back to the type tool, we can click once or hold and drag a box and then simply write our text. Let's go with hello earth for this one. Now we can adjust the size and the field of the text. Only the text that fits inside the box will be visible. We can change the color up here by clicking on this color screen. Last but not least, the font can be changed by clicking on this drop down menu here. Now here is another fun thing you can do. If you click down here below the layers section, on this FX button, and then choose stroke in the menu. You can add a stroke effect around your text and adjust the settings such as color, opacity and size. This can be added to your other layers in Photoshop as well and is not limited to text only. We are not going to be able to cover everything today and that is why I've created a course with the focus on creating children's books and illustrations for those interested. I will teach you everything I know and this will probably be the last guide you'll ever need to create amazing illustrations and high quality books. The link can be found in the description down below. I will also try to cover some sales strategies and mindset if you're into Amazon KDP. With that said, let's return to our illustration and continue to one of the most important tools in Photoshop, it's the gradient tool. Now this is what I use to add shadows sometimes, melt the object with the scene or making a character seem as if it's standing in water. So with the gradient tool we have at least two colors we can choose and depending on how we draw the gradient line, the colors go from color A to color B and transitioning beautifully in the middle. Now here is an example of how we can use this tool for our illustration. I like our balloon here but it doesn't really seem to live or breathe in the scene. If we experiment with the gradient tool, going from transparent to a darker shade, we can create something like this. And here is another example from my earlier work. I go into this more in-depth in my course, I strongly recommend that you check it out at least. As I mentioned before, this is only a tool, and your imagination sets the limits on how it can be used and mastered. I can try to inspire you with different examples that I think you will come across in your journey, but in the end you are the one taking action. Now let me show you one last thing before we start over with this entire illustration so that you can do it with me from start to finish. At the bottom we have the zoom tool which is something that you'll use to zoom in on details or zoom out and see the entire image. You can simply left click to zoom in and if you want to zoom out, you can hold down the Alt or Option button while clicking and it will zoom in the opposite direction. So are you ready to do the entire illustration with me? Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, drop a comment down below to show some love and let's go. So again, let's start by creating a page and set the dimensions for it. I'll go with 1920 and 1080 and click on create down here. Good job. Now we'll import the image to Photoshop by locating the image and then simply drag and drop it inside. Now I like the scale and position of it so we can hit enter to make the box disappear. Now we can start off by picking the lasso tool and just select around our object by holding down the mouse button. A rough selection is just fine. The next step is the classical copy and paste by holding down Ctrl or Command and C and then Ctrl or Command and V on your keyboard. Remember the layer section down here? You can always toggle the visibility of a layer down here. I turn the visibility of our white background that got created for us at the start. Now we see our balloon but there is still some work to be done. For the next part I'll first try with the quick selection and then the magic wand. As you can see the balloon is easy to select with the quick selection but the threads are harder to pull off. Instead I'll go with the magic wand tool. Just select the white background and delete. There you go. Now we need to remove the white in the middle. 
Zoom in with the magnifying tool to get a better view. This is good. Let's go with the magic wand again and select the rest of the white parts that we want to remove. Here is another tip. If you hold down the shift key you can add more to your selection and you'll see a little plus sign next to your marker. The opposite of that is by holding down the alt or option key to remove parts of your current selection. With that said, now let's remove the rest of the background. There we go, a clean red balloon. Good job. I am going more in depth into these different tools in my course. If you want to go all in on creating books or learn more about different use cases and get inspired, please feel free to check out my course. I have put a lot of time and effort into creating it and I wish that I had access to something like that before. With that said, fellow viewers, let's bring out the earth. Here we go again, drag and drop. This time I want to resize and move our image around. Now Photoshop is all about making things easier, so let's not complicate it. For our earth, I will go up here and select this round selection, or also called the elliptical marquee tool if you're fancy. With this tool, it's much easier to get a perfect circle selection. Just increase the feather to get a more transparent edge, and you should be fine. Now copy and paste, and the hard part is over. You're impressive, remember that? Now for the background, I took an image that I had generated using Mid Journey and resized it until it fit in our scene as the background. Remember to drag the corners or the sides to increase the size of the image. Make sure the background is underneath our balloon and earth layer so that we see it behind them as our background should be. There we go. This looks beautiful already. Let's play around with the gradient tool and try to make our objects look a little better. Click and hold this bucket icon here if it's not already set to the gradient tool to change it. So the first thing that you need to know is that we need to select our object by holding down control or command and then left click with your mouse button on the layer. This only adds the gradient effect to this marked area instead of the entire image. Just choose a dark color in the image with the help of the eyedropper or color picker tool. Change the preset up here to this one, so we get a dark color turning and going to transparent. This keeps the texture and image of the balloon while adding the darker color of the background. Just hold and drag to add the gradient effect. If you are using the latest beta version of Photoshop like I am, you'll get this line here which enables you to change the gradient effect live instead of redrawing it like before. Now you're experienced enough to do the earth one for yourself. Just remember to hold control or command and left click with your mouse to mark the earth. You're awesome, and remember that perfect is boring. Now if we want to add another gradient effect, we need to create a new layer by clicking on this icon down here with a square and a plus sign. We create a new layer so the new gradient effect doesn't remove the first one. Now we can just add another one over here if we want to by clicking, holding and dragging. There we go. Well done. Now before we finish this off with the text, let me show you another thing so that you can start to create as soon as possible. I want to change the opacity of the balloon as they tend to be a bit transparent. We have that option down here by the layers section. You can change it from 0-100% going from invisible to entirely visible. Beneath the opacity we have something called fill and here is something that even some veterans don't know. The fill changes the transparency of only our original image and not the effects that has been applied to it. In our case this doesn't affect the transparency of our shadow which we created using the gradient effect so I reduce this a little bit and we're done with this part. Now what's left is the easiest part and that's to add our text. Now simply click on our type tool over here. Create a box or simply click to start writing. I will write hello earth because you will subscribe. We can change the color of the text and even choose a light blue color from our earth image with the help of the color picker. Now for the last touch let's click on the FX button down here again, choose stroke and add a white stroke effect around our text. Voila! Remember that Photoshop is all about being creative and experimenting until you reach a result you like. With that said, if you got something out of this video, please subscribe, like and share. This really helps me out so that I can create more content like this. If you're interested in learning Photoshop for real, make sure you check out my course. You'll find the link in the description down below. I have put a lot of effort into it and I'm sure you will like it and maybe even land a job if interested. Remember that even Mr. Beast is hiring if you know your way around Photoshop. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in my course. Well done today.